What are these strange circles dotted for miles across this moonlight landscape? In this video, we're going to find out. To first understand what the holes are, we need to get a picture of their location. Just 60 miles off the coast of the Sahara, the largest hot desert on Earth, there are a small cluster of islands with similar arid conditions. Despite the fact that these islands, called the Canaries, are so close to Africa, they are actually the territory of Spain, 2,000 kilometers away. Geographically, it seems a bit bizarre that these islands have anything to do with Spain at all. The original inhabitants of the Canaries were a Berber people who are now assimilated into the general population. Research has shown a shared crop package was brought to the islands at at least around the 3rd to 5th centuries BCE consisting of hurled barley, durum wheat, lentil, broad bean, pea and fig. They were conquered by the Spanish in the 15th century. During this time, the Spanish kingdom set out to conquer the New World, and the Canaries became an indispensable Spanish base for replenishing westbound fleets. Not only did they utilize the trade winds, but also the resources of the island, such as drinking water and food, which was likely restocked here. However, the Spanish were not the first to conquer these islands. Historical accounts of an expedition in the 4th century BCE by Juba II, King of Mauritania, were preserved. They state the islands were named Canaria from the multitude of dogs, canes, of great size that were present there at the time. Which is crazy when you think about it, but islands in general are known for having species that are quite extraordinary. Due to isolation, animals and plants can evolve in unique ways. Therefore, the ecology of the Canary Islands is also out of the ordinary. Some areas of these islands are desert, some are volcanic, which look like the terrain of another planet, whilst other areas resemble Jurassic Park because of the lush evergreen cloud forests, which are a prehistoric natural treasure. They are known as laurel forests and date back to the tertiary period, which is as far back as 66 million years ago. These Jurassic forests are said to have covered every continent on Earth at the time. Now the descendants of these ancient laurel species exist only where there is high humidity and relatively stable mild temperatures. One of the only islands in the archipelago that no longer hosts the laurel forest is Lanzarote, where the climate is more similar to the Sahara and it's on this island where these mysterious rock circles are situated. The already dry and arid easterly Canary Islands of Lanzarote with 6 to 8 inches of rain in a good year and less during a drought has suffered from multiple eruptions in the 1800s. The Canary Islands is home to 33 volcanoes which has shaped the landscape today. On Lanzarote, during a 6 year period, 32 fresh craters were formed and nine villages were buried under lava and ash, resulting in a topography both forbidding and forbidden. The eruption destroyed farms and transformed a large part of the island into a scorched moonscape. Today, much of this region is inaccessible to visitors. In the interest of science, many square miles of sharp clinker-like extrusion scattered with lava bombs has been set aside for study, restoring life to areas far more barren than California's Death Valley. The public is permitted only to restricted views. And it's this very unusual landscape and climatic conditions on the island of Lanzarote which has led to these mysterious circles and it's connected to an ingenious way to survive in this barren landscape. Lanzarote has become famous for grapes, figs, almonds, onions and row crops all grown without artificial irrigation. This makes Lanzarote's farming worthy of scrutiny by gardeners in dry climates across the world. The pleasant surprise is that in solving a crippling horticultural problem, Lanzarote's islanders have invented an arresting landscape unlike any other in the world. Lanzarote's volcanic disasters created serious problems for the island's farmers. Residents lost hundreds of square miles of cropland in the 19th century lava flows. Many acres were strewn with a blanket of black mineral ash called pecan, in a land that receives less rainfall than San Diego in a dry year. This accident of nature was a catastrophic loss of usable farmland. However, with native ingenuity, 
the islanders have turned their horticultural hardships into a triumph of geotechnology. According to local law, this change of fortune hinged on a chance discovery that a wilting plant placed near a wall made of porous lava blocks seemed to revive. The sponge-like rock had absorbed moisture from the air and drawn it into the soil below. From this observation, farmers developed a new kind of agriculture in the arable parts of the island. Lanzarote's horticulture embraces three features, protecting plants from the sun, shielding them from the wind, and mulching them with pecan. Large plants such as figs, almonds, and grapes are grown at the center of wide, shallow basins scooped out of the sandy soil. Tucked into these artificial hollows, plants get extra shade during the morning and evening hours. As additional protection against the ceaseless trade winds, low crescent shade walls are built out of lava blocks. In geographical terms, pecan is called ash or tepra, light and inorganic. It is shot through with tiny interconnecting air chambers. Unlike pumice, which is filled with locked-in air cells, pecan readily absorbs and transports moisture. When moist maritime air condenses on the surface of pecan, it's absorbed and then drawn by capillary action and gravity to the ground below. Pecan is nature's own drip irrigation system. But pecan is more than a simple hydrophilic mulch. It not only reduces the loss of soil moisture through evaporation and helps put water into the ground, it also amplifies warmth because the lava walls and pecan chunks are charcoal colored. They absorb the heat during the day and retain it long after the sun has set. For plants that require cumulative heat for fruit development, this warmth is an added bonus. All these crops grown in Lanzarote have proved their toughness through the century of cultivation in a dry and sunny climate. However, the downside of living on an island with so much volcanic rock is the catastrophic flooding that occurs when there are heavy downpours. This is because the island is tall, high, and the surface is dry and doesn't absorb water. In Lanzarote, the water rushes to the ocean, flooding towns as it travels there. These towns do not have storm drains, and this type of infrastructure is expensive to install. But just letting water run out to sea is a waste of valuable resources on an already water-stressed island. This is why we the Leaf of Life team are planning a potential test site to bring back the threatened laurel forests. You can find out more by clicking here.